Hey everybody, I'm Carl Weinmeister from Google. Um, I want to talk to you today a little bit about how do you apply machine learning and AI in the DevOps world. You might be starting to uh, integrate ML into the applications you're building. Uh, Kubeflow is an open source project that helps to build a production ML stack. It's basically a set of uh, tools, uh, frameworks, uh, all running on top of Kubernetes. Um, some of the problems that it helps solve, and I have to go through this real quick, is basically enabling uh, reproducibility, having the same experiment that can be tracked uh, over and over, seeing the results. Also, uh, repeatability, uh, being able to retrain your models on a consistent basis. Um, because in data science, often we just think it's about building a model. That's all it is, right? Just that's uh, the, the, the bulk of it. When really we all know that um, there's data ingest, validation, testing, monitoring, logging. These are all the things that we hope uh, with a framework like Kubeflow, we can uh, apply DevOps principles to the sort of workflow of machine learning. Um, so all those steps that I just started to touch on, you have to think about it. You also have to apply it to the right architecture. You have to make sure in a team environment you're using the same uh, package dependencies, things like if you want to use GPUs, you're uh, you know, leveraging those consistently. So Kubeflow is aimed at making it easy to deploy, uh, develop, manage a portable and distributed ML on Kubernetes. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's a, a set of tools and frameworks that really makes it easy to create like a pipeline of uh, containerized tasks to kind of repeat your data science workflow. Um, so basically you uh, create a Docker image uh, for a certain task in your pipeline, and then you could assign it to be a step or maybe a set of distributed steps, so things like training where you want to scale it across your Kubernetes cluster, um, you could do that easily. Um, the, what we're gonna talk about briefly here, because uh, I don't have time for a demo, is kind of the user experience. So kind of how do you deploy it how do you use it? What does it look like? So we'll kind of briefly touch on that. So to install it, um, there's KF Cuddle. So if you use Kubernetes, you know, Kube Cuddle, a similar uh, command. Uh, you basically uh, initialize your environment and you have uh, commands to either uh, install the cluster uh, and then install uh, the uh, Kubeflow stuff on top of that. That's what we just showed on last slide. Um, here we're showing, for example, in GKE or Google Kubernetes Engine, the set of services that are installed for you after you install it. There's a dashboard where you can see things like uh, for model development, your pipelines, you can kind of sort of uh, click on all the different things that you need to do. It hosts that environment in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, here what you're seeing is um, launching a Jupyter notebook. Uh, that's sort of the primary tool that data scientists use uh, for building models. Um, you can select different uh, Docker images that have sort of pre-installed packages on it for you. This is what uh, Jupyter looks like. If you hadn't seen it before, that's gonna launch inside of your cluster. Um, and um, so basically, and you can customize a lot of this. There's default images, but you can go in and change those. Um, what we're seeing next is how you would actually build a Docker image with your training and code on it. Um, if you've ever seen you know, a Docker file, you, know, you kind of create your base image, install your Python packages, and basically copy your um, code into the image. Um, here's an example of uh, distributed training. We happen to use a tool called KSonnet now. We're actually in the process of moving to customize for this. But KSonnet basically gives you a templatized Kubernetes resource where you can uh, apply different uh, parameters and then deploy your uh, job to the cluster. Uh, once you're running your training, you can see here on this slide where um, you can use kubectl, get the, uh, the pod, you can look at logs within it to see how it's going. And finally, the last step to serve the model once you've created the image is to um, run a serving component that comes out of the box. Um, uh, and so, one thing that I also want to show is in our very latest release, um, we have a library called Fairing that makes this a lot easier. What you see today is three different approaches. Uh, if you're building locally or you're using uh, you know, cloud tools, 
uh, with fairing, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but what it does is it abstracts away where you're deploying your training code, your uh, model code to. So basically you specify a different backend uh, and then just swap that in. Is it to the cloud, is it locally, et cetera. So finally, in summary, Kubeflow is a cloud-native multi-cloud solution for ML. Uh, gives you pipelines, and if you use Kubernetes, you can run your ML on top of it. Um, it's an open community, uh, lots of vendors, multiple clouds. Uh, and it's an open community. We have uh, calls uh, every other week. We have a Slack channel. I'll have that information shortly. Um, you know, love to have more people give it a try, as machine learning and AI are a bigger part of uh, development, uh, you know, applications. Uh, there's some of the uh, contact information, our Twitter, Slack, um, and all that, and the GitHub if you want to try it out. Uh, thanks again. Um, my Twitter is on there if you want to reach me. Thank you very much.